everybody, I am Jared Ross, a genie vlogger, and welcome back to another video where I review your DNA test and genealogy questions. If you'd like me to answer a question in a future video, be sure to go to my subreddit, r slash genie vlogger, and post your question there. I do have a huge backlog of questions, so be sure to ask yours so it gets answered sooner than later. Let's jump into it. 100% Europe DNA plus tree for review. So they just got their DNA test and here we have their results. Scandinavian 39.8%, Baltic 35.8%, Balkan 12.8%, Eastern European 11.6%. And then under your ethnicity results, genetic groups confidence level, you only had it at the medium and there's only one well there's two but it's only showing one of two northern germany poland and czechia and then here we have a map places of birth of direct ancestors and i think the poster said that these are color-coded based on the part of their family that it's coming from so I'm guessing it's color-coded to each grandparent's ancestry so it seems like not as much known about whatever the yellow side is a little bit of what's known about the orange a lot known about the gray which is in uh you know that fun area of poland right near the little russian divot or whatever that thing is i don't even remember what it's called and then a whole Whole lot of the black over here in uh, northern Germany and possibly in southern Denmark. Now, this person goes into a lot of details about their family ancestry. I'm really not going to read it all, and I do suggest anybody posting try to avoid posting so much for me. It can be a little bit overwhelming trying to answer, you know, five, six questions in a reasonable amount of time and then having kind of a novel of your family's ancestry. Granted that this one actually isn't that bad to compare to some others that I've seen. Now it seems the only real question that they ask, although I guess maybe they wanted me to just read everything and then kind of give my opinion, which it's kind of a lot. <laughs> um, but the question is, our grandmother never knew who her father was. No one is recorded. If that great grandfather of ours had other offspring, how much DNA might we share? Any clues? Well, to figure that out, all we need to do is jump over to the shared Centimorgan project tool on DNA Painter and we can take a look. So here's the chart. And when you're talking about your grandparent's sibling and their descendants, we're talking about grandparent and then their sibling. So great aunt or uncle. Granted, you talk about your grandmother not knowing her father so if her father did have other siblings, they would be half siblings to your grandmother instead of full siblings. So if your grandmother has a living half sibling through her father, they're going to be sharing about 431 centimorgans with you. And that range could be 184 to 668. If they had a child, then half first cousin once removed. So an average of 224, which is going to be about 62 to 489. And then a half second cousin, which is 120 average. And that could range from 10 centimorgans to 325 centimorgans. Now you mentioned that your highest DNA match is 0.9% DNA, which is really, 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 really low for a highest match. We can see, does that fall into things? So here we're going to enter the percentage. So that's 0.9%. So that's equivalent to about 67 centimorgans. So for 0.9%, you're looking at 67, and does any of that fall in there? Well, yes, that does fall in there. But your only issue is that you're falling into the very low end of that possible relationship range. So while it's possible, it's not quite so likely. But one thing that can make it even better to try to find these relatives is see if your parents or grandmother are willing to test if they're alive. But what happens is, let's say that your dad tests or your grandmother tests, well, that's gonna put them at a higher expected amount of shared DNA with any descendants of any possible half siblings that your grandmother may have. But one major thing I do suggest that you do, upload your DNA results to as many of the other databases as possible because that's going to give you the largest amount of people to match against. And especially since you come from a fairly recent European ancestry, there may be a lot of your relatives in databases that you really aren't going to be able to get into. You should try to get into the Family Tree DNA database. You should try to get into GEDmatch. You should get onto genie.com. You should also look at GenieNet. And you may just have some relative that descends from a half sibling of your grandmother hiding in one of these databases 
but you have to be in that database to be able to match them. On to the next one, relationship. I did my DNA test about a year ago and found my half brother Mike's son, Jay. I also found my half brother Bobby's daughter, Kay. This half nephew and half niece are full first cousins to one another. Another young woman, T, is related to all of us and I am trying to figure out how she is related to me, J and K. T shares 851 cents of Morgans with K, 386 cents of Morgans with J, and 233 cents of Morgans with me. And looking at all the relationship possibilities, I believe that I have figured out the relationships and wondered if you could give me your opinion. I believe T may be a half niece to K, a first cousin once removed to J, and my half great niece. Both my half brothers are deceased, as is T's mother, so we cannot get any information from them. I would appreciate any assistance you may be able to provide. So the best thing is going to be doing a what are the odds tree. So let's jump over to DNA Painter and do that. So here we have the what are the odds tree where I've input Sandy, J, and K, input the amount of centimorgans that they share to T, and then suggested hypotheses. I did clean it up a little bit and I had to put in assumed year. And that's one big thing that wasn't mentioned was an approximate age of everybody, which can change how we interpret things. So we're just gonna have to look at this without knowing the age. So starting out, our strongest hypothesis is this one, hypothesis three, at a score of 22,549. The next best hypothesis is this one, hypothesis two, at 16,681, which it does seem to be a lot bigger, but using Watto, you're actually looking for scores that are at least 20 times as big as the previous one. So technically these two are actually pretty close. But then the next biggest one is this, hypothesis four, at 252, so this is well below hypothesis three and hypothesis two. Then we have this one over here at a score of four, and then we have these with a score of one. So the two main ones that we're looking at are these two. While the other hypotheses are possible, the difference between them and the other ones just make it so that they're really, really, really unlikely. But the main thing we can say is that they're most likely descending from this half brother, the one who's the father of K. And if we're going by the most likely scenario, we're looking at T being a half niece of K and being a first cousin once removed of J and a half great niece to you. And so the big question is, does K know of any half brothers? Because it's most likely going to be that T is the daughter of a half brother, to K that is. But at the same time, we also need to remember, it's also a possibility that T is a granddaughter of one of K's full siblings. Now this would be one of those places where if I knew their ages, it would help out a whole lot in determining if that's even a possibility. But not knowing the ages, we have to keep that in mind as a possibility. So based on what you're saying, it sounds like you're right on track. On to the next one. These are the results of my Polish friend. Her great-grandfather was a Romani and she also have possible Jewish great-great-grandmother. Help me interpret the results. We get Eastern European 96.9% .9 with 15 different regions and the top ones being Masovian Vovoidaship, Poland and Sverdlovsk Oblast in Russia. I'm sure I pronounced that terribly wrong. I do apologize. <laughs> then 2.1% Ashkenazi Jewish, 0.8% Southern European, 0.6% Italian, 0.2% broadly Southern European, 0.1% broadly European, and then 0.1% Senegambian and Ghanaian. Based on what we are seeing here, it does seem like there is a possibility that there is some sort of Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry. You mentioned that your friend does have a second grandparent who was Romani, but that they were Polish. So this certainly makes sense with that Polish. I'm not the best with Romani DNA results. I haven't really dealt with them a lot, and I don't really know the Romani history that well. But my understanding is that there is a South Asian, Central Asian connection between the Romani people. So whenever I do hear that someone has Romani ancestry, I usually assume that's kind of 
going to be what I see some sort of Asian ancestry, maybe Middle Eastern, but that doesn't seem to be coming up here. One thing that I think would be possible is the fact that with the Southern European of 0.8% and that broadly European 0.1%, maybe that represents that Romani ancestry. Being that it's a second great grandparent, you're typically going to be looking at about 6.5% DNA. But of course, with the randomness of recombination, it's possible that you might not inherit much at all, or at least your friend wouldn't. If that Southern European is representative of it, it could just be a really, really small chunk that they inherited, but didn't really inherit much from that Romani ancestor. And then with the Ashkenazi Jewish, 2.1% again would be on the smaller side for a second great grandparent. Certainly makes much more sense in terms of a third great grandparent. But that randomness of recombination, you just never know how much you're going to get. So this would be something that I'd be interested to see what type of genetic matches they're getting. For one, if you look at their genetic matches, do you find anyone that does have very strong Romani ancestry? Even better, someone who only has Romani ancestry. Because if that's the case, they may have Romani ancestry. It's just that they didn't inherit any DNA that would make it seem like it when you look at these admixtures, but maybe they did inherit some DNA that's enough to allow them to match to some of their genetic relatives who are still full Romani ancestry. And then the same exact thing with your matches looking for someone with Jewish ancestry. Can you find matches that have very strong Jewish ancestry or even better, 100% Jewish ancestry. If you can find that and even better determine a specific family of matches, in other words, can you find two or three matches that are related to each other that are all fully Jewish ancestry, but not just related, but that you know how they're related. Because if you can do that, then you can pinpoint where in their family tree to look into the ancestry because very likely that's where you're gonna find your connection to their family tree. On to the next one. Always waiting for the next video to drop. Everywhere I go, I see his face. <laughs> Just because you're not expecting to see this one in a video, it's going in the video. Generic autosomal versus Y-DNA. So this is a question about autosomal versus Y-DNA results. My Y-DNA is RYP1433, which is a branch off of the young Scandinavian CTS4179-YP386. However, on the autosomal, I show a 2% Swedish and a 3% Norwegian. Why does autosomal not show a stronger Scandinavian component? I do get a large British admixture. Is it due to recombination or hard to differentiate between Northwest European populations or something else? I have tested and have my stuff uploaded at all of these different websites. Now the answer to this one is kind of simple but complicated at the same time. So the simple thing is that when you're looking at Y-DNA, you're looking at only one line of your family tree. So you're looking at your father's 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 father and so on. But when you're looking at autosomal, you're looking at the entire tree. So looking at your father's father and your father's mother and your mother's father, and your mother's mother, and then all of their parents. And so you really need to, first of all, consider everything in your family tree. But on top of that, when you're looking at your Y DNA, that is talking about very, very distant ancestry. So someone could actually do a Y DNA test and get some sort of Scandinavian reading but then do an autosomal test and not get any sort of Scandinavian. And it would mostly just rely on the fact that they may not have any recent Scandinavian ancestors, but you trace up that purely paternal line for, you know, a thousand years, and then all of a sudden you've traced to some ancestor who was from Scandinavia. But when you're looking at autosomal DNA tests, those really only have a range of about 300 to 500 years. Sometimes you'll hear it a little bit differently. The main concept with autosomal DNA is that it's really confidently tracing back to maybe your fourth great grandparents or fifth great grandparents. So if you look at your family tree for the past just 300 years and see how many of your ancestors would fall into this Scandinavian category. But I will say that you are also right in saying that part of it does have to do with the difficulty of deciphering Northwestern European. So even if you do have, let's say an expected 25% of your family tracing back the past 300 years that would be Scandinavian, it may not come up like that because of the difficulties tracing that DNA. So it's definitely not surprising that you would have a Scandinavian Y DNA lineage, but only get about 5% in your 
admixture. Now I learned a whole lot about my Y-DNA by taking the Nebula whole genome sequence test and then uploading it to Y-Full. And I actually discussed this in a video. So if you'd like to check that out, be sure to click right here. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. That really does help me out. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.